project was uh, well it did more than keep me busy that um, in all honesty consumed me for the duration not only because it was a major commission but primarily because the best in the world were going to put their work on it and put their eyes on it so that's the pressure was on and the time frame was tight I think if we if we knew what we were about to get into it mightn't have happened and the old stone hives they have that structure where they used to store um, food and resources and stuff I suppose that's where it stemmed from because all these guys coming from all over the world come from England and so on with all their knowledge to bring it to one place and to to store it forever more in that place. I guess that's it, that's that's the crux of it. Just to capture that knowledge and hold it in one place for future generations, hopefully. If I'm not busy, I'm depressed. I think it's it's that simple, and I think a lot of creative people, certainly the, a lot of people I know, that holds true for for most of them. In my experience, it's uh, it's vital to be busy. The first shop I was in, they had an old uh, power hammer that was rarely used, but for some reason I was drawn to it. That was the spark of interest into blacksmithing for me, I guess. I worked with a lot of great people in the States. It really opened my eyes up to what could be done. Uh, there's very limited amount of welding in it. I wanted to keep it that way, so it is a blacksmith's event, so to show what could be done with traditional skills. So um, it's a self-locking structure. As each and each element is added to the structure, it, it becomes more and more solid. So there isn't, there isn't a need for welding as such because you don't get a true appreciation of what the machinery is actually doing until you're able to do it by hand. So many people are gathered here together to work for one sculpture. Of course, I know these people. First I met them in the books, which was a Bible for me. <laughs> to learn a new contemporary design in a blacksmithing. Of course, Tom Joyce uh, and Takayoshi Kamine and uh, Francesca Gazito. And all of them are very different, very different. Each of uh, them works in very different style. But here I can understand the, even the character of the master. And of course the thinking. Because things speak a lot about their masters. <laughs> and our language is language of iron. とにかく色々そうだったらするんですね。で、そこで行ってその場所でものを作るってなるとやはり自分の仕事場とは違うんです。全く合うんですなんですね。アザープレイスがそうなるとそこの環境っていうにまずなれないといけないし、で、今まで
てその時にやはり道具のこともありますし場所のこともあるし材料のこともあるしこれは完璧に揃うっていうことはまずないんですでそのためにまあみんなが一通り集まってこの道具はこ借りたいからあっちから借りてきてこの材料が欲しいからこっちからもらってきてって一緒になって協力してやっていくとああいうふうにちゃんとした立派なものができると思います私ははいそうですです。And the rings would join by as if it were, you know, clasped hands. And then the other idea was to link them together in a very random way so that ultimately it was、um, kind of that、uh, interdependent connection between each one of us、uh, rising to the occasion to make this project together. These are, are pretty sharp. Yeah. So they leave a lot of dip. So it's this. When、yeah. you're doing the cross piece,、yeah. make sure you're really doing the half p i e c e blow way up there. Yes.、Yeah. And then work it down. Yeah. It'll come out good. Okay. Some of the Smiths are,、uh, you know, near beginners, and others have been working at it for years and years. But yet, each have, you know, come into the project knowing that they will be tested. はい。Really, really, really great. So, I had about five or six different people at different stages over the three days just chipping in and, and giving me a hand. I love it. I love it. Great. I went to, when I did my year of art college, it was in Belfast.、So. You know, we're all aware of the, the danger factor of the material, but you just have to dance around each other when you're working in, in, in groups, you know. And that's kind of the fun of it, really. It's nice to be working closely with people and dancing the dance. <laughs> The history in England, I mean, I don't know if it's all over the world, but、um, the, the nail and the chain making industry, the, the whole family would be involved. You know, the women would forge with a, a baby strapped on their back, you know, and, and yeah, the nail making, chain making, and、um, riveting. Yeah, whole families would be riveters back in the day, and the, the women would probably be on the fire throwing the rivets to the, to the husbands up the, up the ladders in the shipbuilding. So, yeah, women have always had their, their hand in the fire. 
I think the thing I love seeing most is seeing the, the children having a go at the forge and, and the look on their faces of, of achievement and um, girls and boys alike. So you never know, we might have made 10 or 20 blacksmiths out of the young ones in Monaghan this weekend. So. <laughs> They invite me to a scrap yard where there were all these chunks of steel. And I say, are you serious about to make an homage to steel and engineers? Yes, we are. OK, give me the industry. And they give me. You know, then they see the budget, and they want to kill me. But anyway, <laughs> I did it. This is interesting because it's a, a big machine for showing kids what the water can do. So it's music, there's organs there and there. If you walk from from there to there, you will be listening to very different sounds. Yeah, that's another, called Wechurawa. It's uh, an homage to uh, Indian chieftain of Chile, very important for us. But the world of art, where I belong, or where I, the place where I come, now have been taken by intellectual philosophers, and they don't know how matter moves. And it's terrible for all of us, actually, you are, you are you know, as, as um, craftsmen, you are run by intellectuals now, and then something is calling for a little bit of a revolution from our part. Showing them that an intellectual, a philosopher, a man used to work with books, will never ever understand matter if he's not eating stone, steel, or wood, or anything. Uh, I think in Soviet time it was industrial on the blacksmiths and it was almost forgotten uh, the decorative uh, iron works uh, was not in use almost but maybe it started in 70s or 80s of last century a new generation of people uh, uh, took interest to this craft This is the end of a paper mill shaft that um, that I've taken uh, about 400 pounds from, and then we're forging it into an 11 and 5 8 uh, cube. So here I'm putting a, a steel pin um, to blind rivet the two cubes together before I squeeze them. Um, this, this was fun. It's like goddamn tongs. <laughs> How many times did we say that today? No. <laughs> This is actually small for this torch. This thing can cut through four foot material. The kerf is an inch and a half wide. <laughs> so this is the very specialized sign language. <laughs> and I can tell you the first time that I was there, it was just, I mean, I was laughing inside, but, but I was also crying inside, you know, because I was making these things, and as soon as I'd make them, I'd set them over carefully in a place, and uh, I'd turn my back for a little bit, and the piece would be back out in the scrap pile, because <laughs> somebody with a forklift was saying, well, that's definitely a mistake, and it doesn't belong there. Sunday morning. Is it Sunday morning? I don't know, sir. Get that just a bit further over because yeah. it will spread, although you will be able to knock it back yeah. that way as well, won't you? So that's good. Well, there's always that level of risk, which I like a lot. You know, the dynamic shifts and changes, um, you know, from the moment one begins uh, working on the project. 
um, it went right in line with the fact that I wouldn't have known many of the Smiths that I'd be working with in that morning. So the level of risk is one that that requires a kind of trust um, in the process, but also a trust in the abilities of people who have stepped up to the plate. Oh, I love having this camera here. Really nice. Oh, wow. Well, I'm to, kidding, I'm kidding. He's nice to see the work. Yeah. He was a talented man. He woke up with a dream. Yeah. <laughs> the trouble is, he shared it with everyone. <laughs> Because we're, we're, we're going to have to think about it, so they're going to have to be cooled off open. But make them open big enough to get around this guy. I don't know if I had a preconception of, the, of how it would be with all the, the artwork installed. Um, I didn't go that far. But now that it's reaching completion, it's better. Better than, you know, it's everything and more I could have hoped for. These are blacksmiths, uh, Awe blacksmiths in southern Togo, about two and a half hours um, east of Lome, the capital. Uh, there's over um, 900 blacksmiths in a community that's made up of 3,500 people. It's astounding how many smiths are there. And um, these blacksmiths have been working you know, this way for 600 and some odd years in this area. And uh, the young boys learn to forge when they're five years old. Uh, the grandparents, the elder men in, the, in their families are the ones that teach them how to use the bellows and they'll be the ones that work in the kid forges. Um, but they're highly skilled at making about 35 different objects from farm tools to musical instruments to divination objects to ceremonial objects that are used in some of the rituals that they're involved with. Uh, the market women are the ones that go and bring scrap iron to the village. They offload the uh, the material, they take you know, the finished goods back to market and these hoes are signed in such a way with small chisel marks that they know who the smith was, his helper was, where the scrap came from, you know, all these different <coughs> attributes are seen on there and she does all the accounting to figure who gets what when the object is sold. They're world renowned for these musical instruments because they have such great tone. In this forge welding here, how efficient this square a club type hammer is for getting right into the corner and welding precisely where the thickest and thinnest sections join. And you see how it just draws it out, you know, like drawing dies in a power hammer. Whereas our cross beams, we have to flip, you know, he just, it's a quarter turn of his wrist. The bellows allows the air to be preheated. That's an amazing technology that they developed some 350 years before Europeans figured it out, which is really what gave us the Industrial Revolution, was knowing that you had to preheat the air to get a high enough temperature to you know, cast iron or to make it efficiently. together with the other blacksmiths and metalsmiths and learning from them in, in areas that I know nothing about. That's the highlight for me. And then of course watching all these other wonderful international smiths and going to one or two lectures about their work. It's fantastic. All right. 
if you see pictures from Greece and sculptors were slaves, we are slaves. You know, then we have the writers, but at the top are the musicians, and I think, and poets. In the, you know, the pyramid, you always go the musician like Bach or somebody, and then you have all the scale, and we are at the bottom. <laughs> but we conserve history. If you go to Greece, the only thing you'll see is the carvers' uh, work. The origin of this island will be conserved in in, in, in fortune. At the end, we are the one who paid the bill, you know, for the history. <laughs> で、相手というのは私が例えば一つの門を作るとした時にそれに3 使っエスティメーションで Come again and it's not bad, you know. When I said when I said you're the master, stand back and watch, I didn't mean it literally, you know. You said that earlier. And I'm taking absolutely no notice of what you say ever again in all my life. You know that spelt wrong? Yeah, yeah it's upside down. Of course, uh, the theme of uh, forging was uh, a knowledge. So I thought that knowledge consists of many, many layers or many different uh, levels, which uh, any any person has to reach, and it's infinity. <laughs> you can do it all your life, I think, and you just get it up to another level. So don't stop. <laughs> Keep on trying. I know from looking around, from seeing seeing the older generation, the nostalgia, you know, looking back, it brought back a lot of memories for people and for the kids, I suppose, there was definitely a twinkle in a few eyes there and maybe it changed something. We've got 
got some really, really good guys. And on top of that, we've got a structure that was designed by Mark Keating all the way from the court. As a whole, I hope there will be a better understanding of the trade, of the craft, and hopefully some work for us all.